everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And the 100th test between the All Blacks and New Ze- I mean, Springboks turned out to be an absolute crack of a game. New Zealand winning 19 points to 17. And I sit there and all I can just say is that if the Springboks could have just held on to the ball for five minutes instead of having to always kick it away, we win that test match. I mean, what a response from the Springbok forwards. They absolutely dominated that New Zealand pack forcing error after error, getting out of jail every single time. But the needless, aimless kicking today was just, it was too much. And Andre Pollard, first of all, left another two points out there, which he probably shouldn't have. Um, and that's the difference. Once again, Jordy Barrett starting all his kicks, finishing them the, um, with a three-pointer towards the end. Two in the match. We leave two points out there. We get those two points. We draw the match. And that kick towards the end when Pollard... Kick just before the penalty, which then won the match, was 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 aimless. It wasn't towards touch. It wasn't contestable. Just sort of chipping it towards between the, the halfway and the ten meter line. They counter attack, win a penalty. Vili Leroux could not kick anything fast further than about ten meters. Consistently putting our pack under pressure, and yet they consistently responded. But we couldn't get anything out of that game. So so frustrating when you think of a week ago how poor we were against Australia for the Springbok pack to respond like that. And to play so well and come up short is so, so frustrating. It's just, I can't, I don't understand it. I I can understand, I mean, throughout the entire game, lots of the kicking game was working. But Pollard kicks too deep every time to make it testable. And then towards the end, it it puts in a nothing kick. It was so frustrating. And we should have won that game and we didn't. But um, yeah, and that's why I think I'm just so frustrated because... Look, if you had told me at the beginning of the week we were going to take it down to the last few minutes, you know, we would have th- we've said, um, cool, we can do that. But, oh, it's just so frustrating to continue doing that. And so a brilliant match for the neutral, a brilliant match, and very disappointing from Springbok fans. But they pitched up today. They did the job today. They did enough to win the game, um, but they didn't take – but they, they just – they just couldn't see the game out. You know, no game management on the back line towards the latter stages of the game. And that's what cost us in the end. So very, very frustrating when you think we really should have done a lot better and we should have taken a win from that. But at the same time, hats off to that Springbok pack. Sia Khaleesi, Kwaka Smith, uh, Malcolm Marks when he came on, Vincent Koch, Luit Diaga was had an absolute iffy, but I mean, phenomenal at line out time. That Springbok pack pitched out. Dwayne Vermeulen was back to his best today. But our back line just let us down today, specifically our playmakers. The Villy LaRouge, your Andre Pollard, your Fafta Clerks, they let us down today. And they've been letting us down for a while now. And I think you have to make changes for next weekend. Um, to leave Andre Pollard on for as long as you've got, when you've got a reserve fly half on the, on the bench, beggars belief from the coaching staff. So they need to be accountable for not making those decisions. And if you look at the game, it was a horrible start from the Springboks. I mean, they conceded in the third, second minute as Will Jordan sort of, well, Scott Barrett sort of strolled through the, the, the Springbok defense, getting the ball out to Will Jordan, who had the pace to get past Villaru. Jordy Barrett with the conversion. But then, just after that, you know, a bit up and under from Faf de Klerk being fielded horribly from um, George Bridge. And Spoon Corsi jumping on that opportunity, scoring a try, hitting back. And after that, the four started dominating. We won a couple of penalties, probably like 10 minutes, 13 minutes. Um, it took a while for New Zealand to score their second points of the match. Was It was a penalty through Geordie Barrett in the 34th, 31st minute. Uh, Spoon Corsi then got sent over the yellow card in that 34th minute, um, almost conceding a penalty try, but um, getting aware of the penalty in just three points. And we only did concede three points during that time. So I think it was actually quite a good yellow card as far as they go in terms of not preventing a try. Um, and then we literally, when Andre Pollard, 57-minute penalty, Jordy Barrett, 60-minute penalty, Pollard, 66-minute penalty. We had the opportunities. We kept winning penalties and turning over ball through the forwards, but the backline just couldn't see it out. And then again, right towards the end, 77th-minute penalty from um, Jordy Barrett to win the game. So, so, so frustrating. If we look at the stats... They tell a very interesting story. 55% possession to the All Blacks, 45 for um, South Africa. So it was a very close game um, the, that, in that sort of respect. 19 defenders beaten by the All Blacks, 8 by Springboks, 3 clean breaks to 1. Uh, if we're looking at the defense, the Springboks missed 23 tackles, the All Blacks missed 8. Turnovers won 14 to 2. The breakdown, which me and the Kanyo flagged as an area that we can exploit, and I got flagged for it, was one way. I mean, 14 turnovers today. Brilliant. To be honest, Defensively, you could see one try in the first two minutes and didn't concede a single thing after that. So despite the 23 tackles, defensively, we did not look like conceding a try. But 
And yeah, even discipline wise, you know, you can see those penalties, you can kind of get over it, but it just, we had the opportunities, didn't, just, just didn't take them. Um, Moors were pretty, pretty solid. In terms of our set players, we lost one lineup and stole three. We won seven of our scrums, didn't lose a single one. Discipline, we conceded 16 penalties. So discipline is a bit of an issue with the spring marks. Conceding a couple of poor penalties, and you think of that turnover towards the end. One backline player, a couple of other, other, other spring marks, and you couldn't move him. Very, very frustrating. Um, looking at some of the player stats, some of the big, big sort of ball carriers across the field. Scott Marriott made uh, six carries. Leo Lala made seven carries uh, for the All Blacks. Um, Will Jordan made 58 meters across four carries. George Bridge made 60 meters across eight carries. Didn't really do much today, did uh, Will Jordan, apart from, and so did George Bridge, apart from gifting a try to, to the Springboks. The big carriers for the Springboks were Quaka Smith made seven carries. Sia Khaleesi made six carries. I think those two were tremendous. Um, I imagine Jordy Barrett gets man in the match, but in my opinion, I think Quaka Smith and Sia Khaleesi were sublime today. Uh, defensively, Sia Khaleesi, 14 tackles, missing one, one turnover, one. Quaka Smith, 15 tackles made, uh, missing just one. Two turnovers, one from him. Lourdes Diaga, 13 tackles made, two turnovers, one. In the midfield, Damon Day Lindy made 12 tackles, missed three. Pollard made 10 tackles, missed one. Um, we did a lot of defending today, and as I said, they didn't look like scoring a try. Um, the big defenders for um, New Zealand, Ethan Blackadder made six, didn't miss one. Brody Vitalik made seven and didn't miss a single one. Um, Discipline-wise, Lourdes Diaz conceded three penalties um, and frustrating penalties. You know, I think two offside penalties, kind of needless from Lourdes Diaz. Quaker Smith conceded three, I think two were breakdown penalties, which is quite standard, and then one with a high tackle, which slipped up. Um, Joe Moody was a walking penalty at the moment, four penalties conceded by him. Um, and then... Yeah, the bench I think made a difference I thought Malcolm Mark Stephen Kitsoff and Vincent Koch were very good at scrum time they conceded one penalty but it looked like they had the, the upper hand Malcolm Verstaden had a very nice cameo off the bench um, we didn't see Alton Yankees and I think that is is pretty poor by the coaching staff to see Alt- um, um, Andre Pollard who wasn't kicking particularly well was struggling at times um, and then not making the change so you've got to be, you've got to be accountable for that so you know I think they silenced a lot of haters in terms of a game plan which would have beaten the All Blacks except for that last five minutes not being able to close the game out. Let me know what you thought of the game down in the comments below. Smash like on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, My name is Steven. Thank you very much for watching and I'll chat to you soon.